Welcome, everyone. My name is Elaine Schwartz. I'm Director of Guidance. And I would like to welcome you to our sophomore parent coffee. And I would like to thank you for bringing us this beautiful weather. I think it's all because of you. And I understand the next few days are going to be absolutely gorgeous, just like this. So thank you for that. I'd like to begin by introducing our terrific principal, John Dodig, who is always there, ready to greet your students first thing in the morning. He's in the hallway, in between classes, talking to them, and they love talking to him as much as he does to them. Here he is. I never stand at a lectern, but we're being videotaped, and I was asked to do this and use a microphone. So if I look a little awkward, it's because of that. Um, you know, I, I, this is my 43rd year. I've been standing, greeting kids coming in every morning for all of those years, and I, I do it 90% because it makes me feel good. That's why I do it. Uh, but I also learned along the way that perception is reality, and a kid actually told his mother a few years ago, you know, I don't think Mr. Dodig does it. <laughs> I was going to English, and he was in the hall, I said hello, and when I came out of English to go to my next class, he was still in the hall. <laughs> and so what, he, what he didn't know is I programmed my iPhone to ring, or buzz, two minutes before the bell rings, and then I get up, unless I'm talking to a parent, and I go in the hall, I watch them pass, and I go back to work. So I just need, especially a budget time, you know, I just wanted you to know that I do work. Uh, <laughs> But it's really important that I see all of their faces. I, I wish I was that guy on TV who memorizes hundreds of numbers or names. I can't, but I probably know four to five hundred names. But I know their faces, and uh, it just makes me feel good. So you're here today to start a journey that is uh, daunting if you've never done it before. If you have done it before, it's not as bad. Actually, I met a parent uh, yesterday well, this was her third one, and she said, basically, I could care less, but uh, if, if you haven't done it, my suggestion is fasten your seatbelt, grab hold of the hand of your child's school counselor, and the counselor will walk you through step by step by step. And I say that in all honesty, there is nothing that will be a surprise to you. And they'll even tell you, if you ask, how much you should intervene in your child's life in this process. I mean, everything as silly as, should I write his essay? What do you think the answer to that is? Um, right. So honestly, they know what they're doing. They've been doing it for years. We have a good track record. And I know it's tempting sometimes after you remind your child to clean up the room and put on her socks and, uh, you know, have you done this, have you done that for the college process, but work with the counselors and they'll help you through this. So thank you for coming, you'll have a, you'll leave here learning a lot and you'll feel a lot better, I'm sure. And now I'll introduce Jim Farnan, who is the assistant principal for all of the kids in the sophomore class. Good morning everyone and welcome back. It seems like yesterday that we were saying hello at freshman orientation and it is, right now it's halftime, so that's kind of scary. Um, John said, fasten your seatbelt. Deb Slocum, my colleague over here, uses a, a line from time to time and I, and I absolutely love it. And I, I live with a junior and I will tell you it's a lot easier to work with high schoolers than it is to live during this process. So um, she says, it's a roller coaster. The next two years are going to be a roller coaster. Our job as parents is not to get on the ride with them. And uh, so true and easier said than done. You are in great hands. I rely on not only to work here, but I rely on my colleagues that you're going to hear from today. They are outstanding. You're in great hands. I just want to say welcome. Good to see you all and enjoy. Thank you. All right. I would like to also thank Mike Zito, and I know Jim Honeycutt will be here as well because they're filming today. So if you would like to see this program again on Cable Channel 78, you'll be able to do that. Thank you so much for giving us your time to do that. Also, um, we have two students who were distributing materials. I want to thank them. They're part of our Student Ambassadors Club, and they're going to be speaking to you later on today. I want to introduce 
some of the most extraordinary counselors any high school could ever wish for. So we have Michael Lawrence. <laughs> I love applause. Jen Curry. Denise Honeycutt. Deb Slocum. Chris Gray. Ed Heidick. Vicki Capozzi. Bill Plunkett. And his birthday's Sunday, and he wishes I didn't say that, but it is. It's on Sunday. And P.J. Washenko. We're fortunate this year to have had a terrific intern, Leslie Hammer, and she's here with us today as well. And we have from our College and Career Center coordinators, who you will come to know very well, as your children will as well, Susan Fugit and Shauna Flaherty. So it must be hard to believe that your child has almost completed two years of high school already. How many of you have a junior or senior or someone who's graduated from high school already? Wow, so you know how fast this goes. Time really does fly. I'd like to fill you in a little bit on what's been happening with your children and guidance so far this year. So believe it or not, many of them actually do make appointments and pop in and see us quite a bit. I know they probably don't come home and tell you that, but they actually do. Beyond that, the beginning and first semester, this past semester, we actually saw all of your children in small groups. They met with us in our office. In March, we met with each one of them individually so that we could select classes for next year. Beginning next week, your children will take a career interest inventory that you're gonna hear more about, and the counselors will also be going into their English classes to give them the same information that you're gonna be getting today. So they're gonna be hearing the same exact thing. The purpose of our presentation today is to give you information about our programs and the timing of them so you can feel confident that we're taking your children in a developmentally appropriate way, step by step, through the next two years of high school and the post high school planning process. As you see from our junior year timeline, we focus on different activities at various times of the year. And we're gonna let you know what will be happening well in advance. So I know a lot of this doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now, but it will. So today we're going to actually let you hear about a couple of those points that are mentioned in this timeline. And by just looking at it, you'll get a sense of, of what's ahead. The main message we hope you receive today is that we care very much about your children. And just like you, we want only what's best for them. We also want to relieve any stress and anxiety for them and for you. Be assured that we get to know each one of your children very well, and we're here from the, for them and for you. We have our contact information on this PowerPoint, and I know it's tiny in the sheets that you have. It really is not an eye test. That's not what we meant to do. But if you would like to write down anything about your counselor, you know, phone number and email address, feel free to do that, because you should always feel free to contact us with any questions that you might have. So next, you're gonna hear a little bit more about the College and Career Center. My name is Shauna Flaherty. I'm one of the College and Career Center coordinators, along with Susan Fugit. Um, College and Career Center is located in, uh, next to the guidance suite in room 571. Um, we have walk-in hours, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, during the lunch periods for students to come in and talk to a counselor. Um, some of the resources that we have are summer programs, community service opportunities, um, we uh, have a job bank, so we list jobs on the job bank, which is on the Staples High School website. And we issue working papers. Um, some of the programs that we run are, in ninth grade we do Do What You Are, which is the personality type indicator. In tenth grade we do the interest profiler, which is coming up. And that includes some resume building and writing. In eleventh grade we have the Naviance College Search. We do the interview technique workshop. We have job shadow opportunity and we do the college essay writing workshop, as well as the Naviant workshop for parents. In grade 12, we have over 200 college representatives visit, visit us at the College of Career Center, and we also organize some trips to uh, Norwalk Community College, as well as some technical and vocational schools. Uh, the Naviant's Family Connection is um, a comprehensive um, web-based program, and it's designed to aid in career development and college, and, uh, college decision making. 
students and parents share one account. So if you miss your uh, password, misplace it, uh, your password or your username, just give us a call and we'll help you with it. Thanks so much. Good morning, I'm Susan. Um, so your sophomores will be coming, uh, we will be training them in the Career Interest Profiler in Naviance next week from April 29th to May 3rd. They'll be coming through their physical education class, so their cl whole class will come down. It's all scheduled through us. Um, and they come down and we do it all on laptops through Naviance. We get them up and running. And the Career Interest Profiler is a tool that matches um, types of work activities and careers to your students' interests. So what they do is they answer a, a bunch of easy questions and it'll come up with six different interests. And then their top interests, uh, two or three, will be highlighted in green. At that point, the student can explore the careers that match their top interests. It, they can also put in a particular interest uh, or career or something they've been thinking they want to do um, and search for that individually. Um, at that point, they can also learn a lot about that career or interest. It tells them um, tasks needed for a job and um, skills, the education needed. So there's a wealth of information there um, to explore. We're also going to show them the resume module that's in Naviance. And while they might not be ready for to hand a resume to someone as sophomores, it's never too early to start building a resume. And we highly suggest um, that they start putting in their activities. Um, there's, it's a pull-down menu, it's very simple. You can put in uh, work, uh, if they've done any kind of volunteer work, community service, regular work, summer type activities, honors, academic achievements, music, arts, athletics anything like that, anything they've done, uh, because when you do, when it's time to generate a resume or you start doing college applications, you're going to want to remember every little thing, and it's really hard to go back and remember everything from freshman year. So it's really handy for just to start to build that and put it in, and we show them how to do that. Um, and they can keep adding to it or subtracting to it, and you can gener generate a resume very easily from it at any time. Finally, the, um, well, we will also be showing them a new feature in Naviance this year called Road Trip Nation. Um, it's a fantastic new uh, video where young people have gone out all over and interviewed um, 360 leaders in all different countries and uh, there's about 3,500 videos and about people with passion and interests and they talk about it and you can explore what they say by themes and, and all that. Anyway, we're going to show it to you today. So here's Road Trip Nation. Hello, I'm Mariana. I work at Road Trip Nation, and I'll be walking you through the interview archive, which can now be found integrated in Family Connection. This archive caters to anyone regardless if they're confused about the next step in life or actually know exactly where they're heading. So let's get right into it and answer the question, what is Road Trip Nation and what is in this archive? For years we've been road tripping around the globe interviewing all sorts of people who do what they love. We've been searching for the key to living a happy life and we think we've found some answers. Now Road Trip Nation has partnered with Hobsons to bring these stories from around the world directly to students using Family Connection. It's got hundreds of conversations with everyone from professional skateboarders to rocket scientists, to sport writers to comedians and everything in between. Now, let's dig in deeper. Here's how the archive works. For every interview you see, we've broken it down and tagged it according to the leader's interests and the topics they discuss. On top of that, we've selected our favorite quote from each interview and put together a bio with anecdotes about their personal journey. With hundreds of interviews available, we've made it easy to personalize this experience. One simple way is to explore the archive based on interests. For example, say you've been thinking about exploring the world of science. Simply click on the science interest. Here, you'll find leaders who took something as simple as taking things apart and made a living out of it. Maybe they've opened an interactive restaurant like Chef Hamara Cantu, or perhaps curating an observatory like Laura Danley, or even creating a life-changing gadget like inventor Ray Kurzweil. 
There are pathways within your interests that you may not be aware of, so I encourage you to dig around your interests and see what sticks. We're all about going after things that excite people, but the truth is defining your own road in life isn't always easy. With the Explore by Themes option, you can hear leaders discuss subject matters that most closely relate to you. For example, if you're experiencing doubt, just click on that theme to hear leaders talking about that very same hurdle in their life. Let's take comedian Wanda Sykes. Most people think that she took a straight shot to success, but actually Wanda spent years working for the government and faced disapproval from family when she quit her job to be a comedian. Wanda knew what she wanted to do, but she still had some huge failures along the way. Ultimately, whether it's turning an interest into a livelihood or gathering the guts to make a change, our interview archive offers insights to help make dreams happen. So go ahead, start exploring, and we'll see you on the open road. Um, the slide behind me shows a compilation of all the items that can possibly be included in an admissions decision. Most of them are self-explanatory. Um, we're going to talk about three of them today. We're going to talk about um, grades, standardized tests, and special talents. Um, the rest we talk about next year um, in January at the appropriate time at Junior Parent Night. Okay. A student transcript is an inventory of the courses taken in grades 9 through 12 and credit assigned. Beginning second semester of freshman year, um, you guys have had the capability to view your children's transcripts through Home Access Center or HAC. Transcripts are updated each semester, so that means two times a year. The only time a transcript may not be available for viewing is approximately one week before report cards come out and about one week after. Um, at Staples High School, we calculate two GPAs um, in the red circle at the bottom there. Um, so two cumulative GPAs at the bottom of our transcript. The first GPA is the overall GPA. It's unweighted and includes final grades in all classes, okay? so. Ceramics, U.S. History, Phys Ed, everything is all lumped in together. And that one's based on the very simple honor roll calculation um, that an A is a 4.0, B is a 3.0. The second GPA we calculate is the academic GPA. This one consists of the final, um, consists of the average of the final grades in just the five um, core subjects, English, Math, Social Studies, Science, and World Language and that GPA is weighted based on the difficulty level of the class. So I'm going to repeat again, both GPAs appear on the transcript, um, and it is the transcript that's sent to colleges, not the report card. Okay, report cards show quarterly overall GPAs. Okay, so a week or so ago, your sons and daughters got their report cards. That GPA was for quarter three only. Okay, so even when they get their report card at the very end of June, it's only that quarter four GPA, um, and that's an unweighted GPA. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Peter Wyshanko. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to track your students' progress. Um, now, the way things used to be is we, we had IPRs that came out every month or so into the quarter and that would give you an idea of where your student was at at that time. Now, for second semester this year, we've gone to live grading. Um, so they actually see more up to date, day by day, when the teachers input the grades, where they're at. Um, now that it's live, it's, it's more accessible. It, it doesn't mean that you guys need to check every day. Your students should, should probably check you know, a little more regularly. Maybe a uh, good um, tip would be maybe checking every Friday before the weekend to see if anything was missing, or maybe they didn't do too well on a quiz or a test, and that can be you know, hey, why don't you go talk to your counselor? Hey, why don't you go talk to your teacher, see where you went wrong, or maybe the test that's coming up next week, meet with your teacher beforehand so you can get that extra help prior to uh, taking that. So it's, it's good that it's all live, it's up to date now. Report cards will still come out every two months um, throughout the year. So that's gonna be the best way to track the progress. It, it's good to hang on to those as well, just in case you need a reference back to something. But if for some reason you go into HAC and you don't see the, the grading, you don't see the report cards, um, chances are nine out of ten times there's an accountability. Um, an accountability can be anything from 
a uniform um, not handed into a coach, um, a late book at the library that they have to pay the fee before the accountability is lifted. I had a student come in yesterday and say, Mr. Washenko, I, I want an HAC. My account, it's been deleted. I'm like, oh, let's take a look real quick. Do you have anything you know, that's late, missing, anything like that? He's like, oh, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Sure enough, accountability. So you had to go to the library, pay like a dollar and a quarter, then his HAC got reactivated. So if you do see that, that's why that's happening. If there's no accountabilities once you check with the counselor or the assistant principal, then there is a technical difficulty and that needs to be fixed. So that needs to be brought to our attention and we can fix that. Um, but for the other part with, with grades and test scores, all that stuff that's gonna be coming up next year when they're juniors with SATs and whatnot that we're gonna go into in a little bit, um, it's really important to you know manage you know these numbers. And by manage, I mean you know it, it's, it's a good practice to keep them private because there's a lot of competition here at the high school. I think a lot of kids compare themselves to each other when they see GPA, when they see certain test scores. And sometimes, you know, they may see their best friend who gets a, you know, a certain test score on an SAT, and, you know, if they don't get that score, they feel like, wow, like, I'm not as smart as Billy. It's like, no, it's not the case. It, it's an SAT, it's the first time you're taking it. It's something you gotta shoot for a little bit higher next time, or maybe, you know, it, that's the way it is right now, and, you know, it's, we'll work around that, and that, you know, we can come up with strategies for that. But it's, it's really important to tell them, you know, it, it's okay to keep it to themselves. It's okay if a neighbor asks, you know, what's your test scores? What, what are the colleges you're applying to? To be vague about it. I, I like my test scores. They're in a good range, you know. Or, you know, I'm going to go back and take a second time. Or I'm still working on my list of schools. So th they should get the idea that, you know, it's something you not want it, they don't want to share right now. Um, you know, with, with Facebook as well, everything is, it's now, it's live. Everybody updates on there. Um, all our seniors are posting, you know, where they got into schools, which is great. We're excited for them. Um, but then on the other side of that, there's the students that didn't get to those schools that got denied, and they're the ones that are kind of crushed right now when they see all the celebration. It's kind of hard to handle, and, and we see that from time to time coming to the, the counseling office, and we work with it as best we can. But on the home front, you know, if you can help them manage that as well, it's a big help um, because you know throughout you know junior year, senior year, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's thrown their way. So you know when they need advice or someone to turn to, whether it's us or you, it's great to have um, everybody in the corner. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ed Heidek, and when Mr. Washenko talks about having everybody in your corner, he, of course, is referring to this outstanding guidance staff, which uh, collectively has, my God, probably a couple of centuries worth of experience <laughs> to help guide. So trust us and believe in us. Uh, from the Home Access Center and how one checks their son's or daughter's current grades, let's move ahead a little bit to next fall. Your sons and daughters will be invited to take the PSAT. The PSAT is the Preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test administered nationwide by the College Board, and it yields three scores, critical reading, math, and writing. And every student who takes this test gets ascribed a uh, selection index, which is used by the College Board people exclusively for the national merit competition, commended students, things of that nature. It's not used in the college admissions process whatsoever. It is practice. Next fall, meaning October, which means that the sign-up sheets are in the guidance office. Tickets will be available in the guidance office. You will see the invitation, more or less, the, uh, the note as to how to get the ticket and all of that sort of information on our website as well as I'm sure the PTA newsletter and the like. And more information will come in September. The great thing about having your son or daughter take the PSATs is that when you get the answers, the answer sheet, the score report back, it does have tremendous information. Uh, it will guide you and your son and daughter and us, the counselors, into a world of looking at how your son or daughter did in any particular set of questions, from the easier questions to the more demanding questions. Strengths and weaknesses will be very apparent, and for us in guidance in working with your sons and daughters, particularly when we talk next January at Junior Parent Night, the PSAT results often indicate whether or not a student would be a great candidate for any particular preparation moving forward to the spring SATs and the like. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Bill Plunkett. So um, as Mr. Heideck alluded to, after students have taken the PSAT in October, uh, most will go on to take the SAT and or the ACT in either the spring or of uh, junior year or fall of senior year. Um, these are the two main tests that are used in the admission process at a lot of colleges. We generally recommend that students take one of the tests two to three times, but each student's process and timeline is going to be different. When students should take the SAT and ACT will depend on factors like where they are academically and developmentally, what their course load is like junior year and senior year, work and extracurricular demands if they're in a fall sport or players, for example, so when they're busiest. Um, now, about 850 colleges, uh, four-year schools, do not use standardized testing in the admission process. A list of what are called test optional schools is available at fairtest.org. It's the fair test website. At schools that do look at standardized testing, it's still just one factor among many that they're going to consider. And you'll hear us keep coming back to the idea that the transcript is always going to be the most important part of a student's application. Every college that requires standardized testing will accept either the SAT or the ACT. There are, no, there are differences between the tests in terms of content, structure, scoring, and reporting to colleges. Some of these differences are outlined on the slides and the College Board and ACT websites. There is no surefire way of predicting which test a student is better suited for. We typically recommend that they sit for or at least take a practice test for both the SAT and the ACT, see which scores are higher, and then focus in on that test. Starting this spring, students are required to upload a photo to their College Board account online for security purposes, which will be matched up at the test site when they take the test. There's also no longer standby testing, so just some changes to be aware of for parents who have had older children go through the process. When students begin taking the SAT and ACT in junior year, it is not necessary to send their scores yet. Senior year, once they begin their actual applications to the college, they'll be able to compare the scores that they've uh, the scores from the different tests that they've taken, look at the requirements for each of the schools that they're applying to, and decide from there what scores to send. Ultimately, colleges will require that scores are sent directly from College Board or ACT to the college. Scores are not listed on a Staples transcript. Some colleges allow students to choose which score they, scores they send if they take the test more than once, but some colleges will require that students submit all of their scores. So it's for that reason that we continue to stress to you and your children throughout the process to make sure to check with the individual colleges about their policies and keep that information organized as you go through the next couple of years. Good morning, I'm Jennifer Curry and I'm gonna finish talking about standardized testing with the SAT subject test. So these are content-based tests and the good news is that only a small number of colleges require these, so most students actually will not need to be taking these tests. The other thing to keep in mind is that the ACTs, um, if those are taken by a student, sometimes those can be sent in place of the SAT subject test. So again, to reiterate how important it is to check each individual college's website and policies because each school can decide differently how to approach that. We do bring this up now, even though most students are looking at doing this during their junior or senior year, because sometimes it may be appropriate for a sophomore to take a subject test, depending on which classes they are enrolled in. So if you look at the chart, which I know is, is pretty small, but we will put our PowerPoint on our website so that you could look at it in more detail. It lists all of the subject tests that are offered, as well as the classes that may align best with those offered here at Staples. If your student is in one of these classes, it is critical that they talk to both their teacher of that class as well as their counselor to make sure that the timing of the test is appropriate for them. It's certainly something that we want to make sure that they're taking the test, if needed, at the most appropriate time. In terms of the deadlines, um, you guys will see on your PowerPoint slide, we made it a little fill in the blank for you. So if you want to take out a pen or a pencil, you can write in those dates. So the test is offered on Saturday, June 1st. The deadline registration is May 2nd and the late registration deadline is May 17th. So that's not actually printed on the slides that you have. Um, as with any late registration, that means there's additional fee with that. The last thing about standardized testing, and this really goes for, for all testing um, as well as everything in the college process, is students need to be doing everything with their full legal name. And we define that as the name that's on their birth certificate. We know that many students go by a nickname or their middle name, and anything that they're doing in the college process needs to be their full legal name. 
And if you think about all the materials that eventually go into a college application process, it's coming from different sources. So the students want to make sure they're using the same name every single time they do something. To ensure that we at the school have your student's name correctly, if you log into Home Access Center and just double check to make sure that what you see is exactly what it should be, you know everything from staples that will be sent will be correct. Thanks. Good morning, I'm Michael Lawrence. Uh, Staples High School, of course, has many talented athletes, musicians, artists, so on and so forth. <laughs> And um, a lot of times we have students that want to pursue these after high school. So in terms of athletics, we strongly encourage students who think they may want to pursue competitive athletics in the college, in college, to really go on our website and read the athletics and college admissions process packet that we've created for you. It gives great information and a lot of detail in terms of the recruitment uh, process as well as if you have questions, really use Marty Lisovic as a resource. He's great um, and a wonderful person to bounce ideas off of. I would also talk to your son or daughter's coach. That's very important. And obviously if they plan any type of premier travel or sort of teams to talk to them too to get ideas as well. Um, any student who thinks they might want to play sports at a division NCAA D1 or D2 um, at, a, at that level, should be looking on the NCAA Eligibility Center website for recruitment policies, regulations, and that sort of thing. In terms of our artists, musicians, and actors and actresses, um, and we do have many, uh, it's really important you know, to kind of start thinking about the, the procedures for that as well. So obviously artists you know, saving their work, talking to the art teacher, um, you know, talking to the music teacher, if you have a private uh, voice teacher as well, and just kind of familiarizing yourself with all the different um, portfolio requirements and audition requirements that, that really comes with, you know, being an actor, actress, artist, and so on and so forth. And finally, um, you will be receiving a letter. If your son or daughter has an accommodation through a 504 or an IEP in special education, you're going to be receiving a letter that clearly states the process for requesting accommodations through either College Board or the ACT. I think it's important to know that although we are involved in the process in terms of the paperwork process, if we do not, in terms of Westport Public Schools, determine eligibility for those accommodations. Those are independently determined through College Board and the ACT. Good morning, I'm Denise Honeycutt. For those of you with sons or daughters who are interested in attending one of the service academies, the process of applying begins much earlier. It begins in the beginning of junior year. With the exception of the Coast Guard Academy, um, all of these service academies require an appointment from a United States Senator or Congressman from Connecticut. So it's best to go on those websites and check them out now and see what they require. Um, fast forward to senior year. This is a month-to-month -month timeline to let you know how the college process continues through senior year. We will continue to walk you through step-by-step -step the whole process until your sons and daughters are admitted to college and make their final decisions as to where they're going. In fact, a lot of us, this path past month or so have been meeting with seniors who can't decide, shall I go to this school or this school? We're weighing the pros and the cons, we're helping them you know, as the best we can to make that final decision, which is so important. So we do hold their hands through the whole entire thing. The fall of senior year is very, very busy and we actually kick it off with a senior parent breakfast, very similar to this, but the focus will be on the application process. Um, over 200 colleges, actually college representatives, come to visit us in the fall of senior year and your kids will have the opportunity to meet with those representatives. So it really gets very busy around here. But we continue to meet with you and your kids. We read their essays, sometimes we go over applications, we help them finalize their lists and we make sure that they're they're on track and they meet their deadlines. So rest assured that the process does eventually end 
and your kids will go to college. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Gray. Um, so they may go to college and they may not. They may do something a little bit different. And uh, <clears throat> I think while we sort of emphasize uh, the whole college process here, there are lots of other kinds of opportunities for the young people and one size does not fit all. So I'm going to talk with you just for a few minutes about some of those options. I don't know if you pay attention to the news quite the way we do about college and, and uh, after high school kinds of education, but there hasn't been one week in the past year that I haven't heard information about how desperate corporations in this country are now for skilled technical workers. And many of them have actually helped community colleges develop programs that will train um, potential workers to come and, and meet their needs. So um, I think it's very appropriate for kids, especially who aren't academically focused, don't want to go on and write four more years of English and history papers, to consider some of these kinds of programs because they will have jobs for sure. Um, the community colleges um, in Connecticut or in other states are great options for lots of people. Not only do they offer programs that a typical four-year school wouldn't offer, but um, for kids who are quite ready maybe to um, do the whole residential experience, which brings a whole other you know, group of issues um, that they have to deal with, or for financial reasons, the community colleges are just a great financial bargain. And um, many of our kids, actually 12 of last year's um, Staples seniors are at Norwalk Community College right now earning the core credits that they need to transfer to four-year schools, and no one will ever ask them, where did you start college? You're only ever asked, where did you graduate? Um, the state colleges, certainly in Connecticut, are other fantastic options. I think there's a lot of talk in these communities about the private schools, but this year we had 169 of our seniors apply to the University of Connecticut, which has gotten more and more competitive every year. Um, and it's not just UConn, Western, um, Eastern, Southern, and Central Connecticut State Universities are also great options. Um, Postgraduate programs are a wonderful opportunity for kids who haven't reached their potential in high school, in fact, probably most kids don't, um, but for kids who are kind of late bloomers and or who are athletes and really want to be able to play at a highly competitive level in college, Postgraduate schools um, are a great thing to consider. Typically, these are residential programs where the students apply just like they would apply to a college. They go there just for a year um, to maybe take more rigorous courses, pull their grades up a bit, and for the athletes, it gives them an opportunity to showcase their skills, get another year stronger and better at their, um, at their sport, and have another look by the college coaches. And the last thing that I want to mention is work. Um, there is absolutely nothing wrong with graduating from high school and working for a while. Um, students who do that and then apply to college or go to a, a more specific kind of technical program are always more successful because, as we all know, you learn a lot from working and um, you can't discount that the importance of that. But please rest assured, whatever your, wherever your child is in these considerations, um, and wherever you are, we will help you guys all through it. I had a sophomore come in the other day just distraught about he can't decide what to do with the rest of his life. Should he go into theater? Should he sing? Should he go into business so he can support himself? The poor kid's 15. And so I, I assured him that he doesn't really need to make a big decision about that for many years, and he'll probably change his mind lots of times as an adult. So help them put a little perspective in all this. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Victoria Capozzi. I did not have an official slide today, but I'm, I'm jumping in here because I work very closely with Susan and Shauna in regards to the personality type inventories, the career interest inventories your students will take this year. And I'm very passionate about the career piece of high school. Our kids are learning, they're bright, intelligent, most of them, 
Um, <laughs> um, and they want to learn. And like Chris Gray's 15-year-old boy, this is a tool that might help alleviate his anxieties or questions, let's say. Um, I wish I had something like this in high school. I floundered a bit until I realized, hey, I want to be a guidance counselor, or school counselor, sorry, school counselor. Um, this is here for you. Naviance is here for you and your, stu your kids. Use it, play with it. Um, there, in, in due time, the state of Connecticut is actually gonna be mandating some really focused career uh, tools that we're going to need to use and actually show that we're using to the state with your children. So we're above and be ready to go. And this is a tool that you can use. Please do. Hi, I'm Deb Slocum, another one of the counselors here. If you can't read this slide, it says, Mom, I'm 16, I'm doing my homework, turn off the baby monitor. <laughs> You're laughing at yourselves, right? <laughs> Recently, as the mother of two teenagers, I found myself pulling out photographs of my children when they were toddlers. When they just looked at me with that wonderful, adoring look on their faces, if there was nothing in this world I couldn't do. Because now I get this. <laughs> the look that says, how could you be so stupid? And most importantly, clueless. Back then, the parental comparisons were who sat up first, who toilet trained first, who walked, whose kid was reading Harry Potter at the age of five. We all remember that, don't we? And guess what? Did any of those tasks predict anything meaningful in their lives? But we agonized over all of it, didn't we? I can tell you from experience, 15 years of experience, that the race to be the first to take standardized tests, visit colleges, line up the teacher recommendations in freshman year is not productive and nor does it guarantee a positive result. In fact, what we've seen it produce is enormous stress. And in the past five years, we've noticed a tremendous increase in the amount of stress and anxiety among the kids here at the high school, starting in their freshman year and I might add, in their parents. In response, the guidance department has initiated Project Resilience, which is meant to support parents in recognizing the critical importance of helping students develop coping mechanisms for the normal ups and downs of life. And despite temptation, constant temptation from everyone who lives in your neighborhood, the college search process is not the time to decide the stakes are too high for you not to be over-involved. Believe me, sophomores are watching and listening closely for all the messages about whether you trust them to manage the process and their regular problems, and whether you value them for who they are now, as well as who they might become. In a video that was featured in a resilience email that we sent out this past Wednesday, and for those of you who might have missed it, it's under the Staples High School Guidance website. Marilee Jones likens a role in the college search and admissions process of a parent to that of a parenting role in sporting events. She recommends that parents stay behind the white line, just as I'm sure all of you do at sporting events. You're your child's most enthusiastic fan and support standing on the sideline, providing cheers when she's happy with where she is, and commiserating with her when she's disappointed, providing bandages and hugs, not necessarily advice when life is tough. One wonderfully honest mother confided in me yesterday that not only had she leaped over the white line, but she had a whistle around her neck and was running up and down the field. And let's face it, we all feel that way sometimes, especially, and I've been there, if you have a child who tends to be a little bit more laid back about the whole process. However, it's so critical that your child feel that this process is ultimately his or hers, not yours. You had your chance, this is theirs. So I'm gonna offer some developmental guidelines to help you keep in mind when parenting through the next two years. And hopefully this will help you develop just the, offer just the right amount of support. 
A sophomore's primary task is working on forming an identity separate from his or her parents, but at the same time, they're still very attached to us emotionally and physically. So mixed emotions are very common about the college process because it means two things. Number one, their time at home is ticking down and they may act like they all want to go to California and Alaska to get away from us. The truth is, they really do have mixed feelings about it even if they're not going to admit that to you. And secondly, whenever college comes up, the parents get to jump right back into your lives because guess what, you have the bank account. So don't take it personally if they shut down conversations on the college topic and back off and don't want to talk about it right then. Bide your time, it's still early. Developmentally, most sophomores still have an orientation toward the present rather than the future. So they're thinking about finishing the paper that's due tomorrow, reading that critically important tweet, and deciding what they're gonna do this weekend. As adults, we look back and of course, hindsight is the best sight. And we see what fell down from every single decision we ever made in our lives. And of course, we don't want them to make the same mistakes we did. So we're gonna tell them all about it. And what they think is, my parents are old. What they have to say to me isn't relevant anyway and they really don't understand my life. And they pretty much give you that clear message if you're looking carefully at their facial expressions. So try not to nag and keep your conversations short and succinct. Conversations with teenagers always work better if you let them be the expert. They think they are anyway. So have you started thinking about the college admissions process? Have you thought about where do your friends have any idea where in the country they might like to go? Not, I did a lot of reading about so-and-so university. Let me tell you all about it. That's not what they're looking for. And if they're not ready to talk at all, say, when would be a good time for me to check in with you again so we can start having a conversation? <laughs> Remember that their only real tasks for this year are to stay safe, keep working at school, and develop outside commitments and activities. Everything else is extra, guys. It's all extra. Respect your child's individual temperament and pace. Some students are aching to get out there and see the colleges and others need time more to grow into it. It's all good. You can't force a child's development as hard as we might try. So even with all this information that we've offered you today, carefully stored in your memory, given the Fairfield County obsession with college admissions, you may find at times that you can hardly tolerate your child's inability to see the critical importance of taking just the right test and studying diligently for every single test or quiz she takes. After all, from what you've heard, everybody else's kid is exactly on target. So take a break for yourself. Have a conversation with a trusted friend, do a yoga class, or watch a good TV show. Please, please don't read College Confidential. It all works out in the end, and we'll say it to you repeatedly. So bear with us if we remind you to stay behind the white line. As was eloquently quoted in the New York Times Choice column last week, college is a journey, not a destination. The next two years will go by in a flash. Use our emails and publications to stay informed and talk to your child's counselor if you have concerns. You'll find that everybody in the community has advice to offer. Filter it for yourself. Protect you and yourself from child from participating in endless conversations about college admissions and in playing catching up with the Joneses. You're building a relationship with your teenager that hopefully will last long after they've graduated. No parent wants their child to look back on high school and say, all we ever did was talk about college. Thank you. So we have up here some online resources for you to use, but now comes the best part of the program. We have two students who would like to talk to you about their perspective. So here they are. Um, all right, so my name is Eric Tremuli. I'm a junior at Staples High School. And I'll just give you guys some advice and kind of how my junior year played out. 
So the first thing I did at the beginning of the year, I kind of realized this is going to be a big year for me. And I took a second and I was like, all right, what, what do I want to focus on? What are like my goals for this year? How do I balance academics with like the SAT, the ACT, athletics? And the most important thing is everything is going to work out in the end. You'll be fine because if you think about all the students that come through here, everybody goes to college. They everybody like they, they find a school that they want to go to. And the most important thing is just relax. You know, talk to your kids a little bit, but not too much because they'll get overwhelmed. Exactly what they've been saying the whole time. And focus on like what what you want to do for the future because right now it's important, but the future is also important. So kind of balance right now and what you want to do later. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ruben Guardado and I'm a junior as well. And you know, the best piece of advice I can give is just you know, step back and take a deep breath. You know, let's, let's all just take a deep breath right now. Just <laughs> um, This year has been really overwhelming with a lot going on. Like Eric said, um, a lot of SAT, SAT stuff. Uh, I started in late October and I took my first SAT in January. And, and I'm taking it again in a, a week from this Saturday, so you know it, it's all within this time frame. And you know you just gotta realize that you just gotta relax and take it step by step. Um, you know you have a lot going on throughout the year, so you just really gotta learn to manage your time and focus on what you have in the present. So um, you know I I do a lot of things extracurriculars that I enjoy, and that's a really important thing because you learn to realize that if you do what you enjoy, you'll have fun and it'll be all right. So, you know, I'm still here, it's, end of the, it's towards the end of the year, so it's all, it's all gonna be all right. I wanna thank the students again. It doesn't get better than that, right? So thank you for, for speaking at all. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to tell you before we close the program, and that is one of the things that I think you can do that's very helpful is to help your child keep a record of all their activities, their jobs, their clubs, any awards, any community service. Um, year to year, actually, all those details can get lost and forgotten. So if you, you heard at the beginning, Susan, if you could talk a little bit about the Naviance Resume Builder, and we're gonna show your kids how to use that next week, but that is a really good way to do that. The other thing that might be very helpful is to make sure your children save their corrected papers. Junior year, they're gonna be doing a big junior year research paper. That's one paper that might be helpful. And the reason for that is that every once in a while, a college will ask for them. In fact, sometimes if a college is test optional, that's something they might ask for. It might be a corrected paper, it could be a project, but those are good things to kind of keep in mind. Most of all, please try to enjoy these next two years. We keep telling you, they go like a flash. Your kids will be off, away, on their own, and in school before you know it. So make sure you just take time to enjoy. We are gonna be around for a little while after this, so if you have questions, please feel free to come and speak to us. Um, we have, you have an evaluation form. If you can fill that out and either put it on the table, we should have a box marked evaluations, or just stick it there or give it to one of us. There's food, please help yourselves and coffee. And just remember, all of us are here to help get you and your children through the process. Thank you for coming, have a great day.